Welcome back to another week in outfits and welcome back home. Um, we got back from Australia on Thursday night, it's now Saturday morning, and I am feeling very jet lagged, uh, very, very odd. Um, jet lag's a funny thing, it makes you just feel very uh, spaced out. I feel like I'm constantly in this sort of weird out of body experience. But nevertheless, I am quite pleased to be back home and I'm pleased to be back doing, um, like filming with this setup because I found last week's um, weekend outfits quite difficult to film and I kind of didn't want to post it because I didn't like it. Um, I just, I'm not very good at this whole, that whole like ad hoc, just like filming on the fly, but hopefully it was nice to just see what I was wearing throughout the trip, um, nevertheless. So, um, without further ado, I will crack on with this week's weekend outfits. So due to um, jet lag and just feeling a bit disorientated at the moment and just trying to catch up with things, I think the next few days outfits are going to be very, very relaxed, casual and just comfortable. Um, so today I'm wearing jeans, which is funny because I, you don't normally associate jeans with being something I guess like super comfortable and well, casual, yeah, but um, I don't particularly wear jeans very often. I've spoken about this before, how I don't feel like myself in jeans. But when I literally don't know what else to wear, jeans is what I check on. Um, so if you see me in jeans, it normally means I've had a bit of a wardrobe meltdown and I didn't know what else to wear, so I just put jeans on. Um, and I also wear jeans when I literally cannot be bothered to do anything or think or do you know what I mean like you know when you just want to put something on and kind of feel okay um jeans is normally my go-to for that kind of thing so yeah today I was just like couldn't even like process getting dressed properly so I was just like jeans jumper dms in a trench that will do the trench I'm wearing is probably one of my most loved trenches I go as far as saying it's my favourite trench, which is surprising because it's not your traditional camel colour, it's actually navy. You might not be able to tell on camera, it's probably coming up um, as black, but it is a, a dark navy. It's from Studio Nicholson and I believe this winter will be its second winter, or maybe third, no, second winter I think. So I th I've had this for two years now. And um, it could really do with a trip to the dry cleaners, but I can't bring myself to part with it. I don't know what it is. I mean, I obviously trust the dry cleaner, but I just don't like the idea of it not being with me. Even though I go like weeks without wearing it at times, there's just something about parting with it for a little bit that panics me a little bit. Um, I always worry that I want to wear it while it's gone, which is typical. Like that happens all the time when I send stuff to dry cleaners or the tailor, that's when you want to wear it. Um, but yeah, this this is definitely due a um, a dry clean. This trench ticks a lot of boxes for me. First of all, it's single breasted. I love um, any trench. I love trenches to be single breasted. Actually, any of my outerwear, I prefer to be single breasted. It is a really nice sort of A line shape. With trenches, I like them to basically be like the shape of a triangle. That's the only way I can kind of describe it. I don't like anything to kind of uh, cinch in or interrupt the straight lines. I like it to hang like a triangle. Uh, what else do I like about it? Oh, the pockets, yeah. So it's got these um, super deep pockets, but then it's also got these like secret inside pockets. Um, so you can put your hands in the normal pockets, or there's like a little opening and you then have a secret pocket hidden inside which is huge and I guess this is a good way to hide valuable things I guess because if someone was to put their hand in your pocket they wouldn't know that this big secret pocket there is is there as well and it's got a really nice touch on the belt actually it's got this um, brown leather uh, buckle I like to wear this trench in several ways I obviously wear it just like this open up opened up um, and the other, the other way I like to wear it is just fasten the button at the top and then that's when you get the really triangular shape. Not for everyone, but um, yeah, I like, you know, I like big silhouettes. You've seen enough of my outfits now, I like big shapes. And then the other way I like to wear it is, is I will sort of like fasten at the top uh, three buttons, or sort of down to my waist 
and then I will um, w uh, buckle it up. I quite like having um, the top here all fastened up so it's really nice and clean and then you have the bottom um, opened up so you, if you're wearing a nice pair of trousers you can still see those. Studio Nicholson are really good at creating very simple uh, large silhouettes that have got like small little design twists or like nice little details to them. Um, so I'm, I'm, this is such a treasured coat and it will be for a very long time. Underneath I am wearing a cashmere jumper because it's, we are now, ha no we're over halfway through autumn, it's Halloween in like 10 days or something crazy. So uh, it's time for cashmere. This cashmere jumper is from Everlane and now this is really old. When I say really old, I think this jumper is easily four years old now, which for cashmere I think is really, really good. And especially the price of this. I think this cashmere jumper is $100, which would probably equal out to about, maybe it's even less than $100, maybe it's $80. I remember when Everlane first brought out their cashmere, the big sort of like selling point of their cashmere was how affordable it was um, and it is super affordable, the, the quality is also really good, like this has lasted me like I said for four years and I wouldn't really expect that from cashmere, I'd expect bobbling and holes and all that kind of thing. So I've, this has been like my go-to black cashmere jumper for four winters now, um, so this will be its fifth winter I think. Yeah, I think it will also be its fifth winter, or maybe this is its fourth, I can't remember, but this has been the one cashmere jumper that I pull out every year that has never failed me. And this can be put in the washing machine if you wash it delicately. I'm pretty sure I've put this in the washing machine several times and it's come out really well. But I mean, I've had, I mean, there's a tiny bit of bobbling on the side here. Um, but apart from that, I would say this is in really, really good condition considering how old it is. Um, so I will obviously link that below, but yeah, can't rave about Everlane's cashmere enough, it's so good. Um, my jeans are also quite old, sadly most of this outfit is old and it's not no longer available to buy, but the jeans are from And Other Stories. Now, this is such a funny, well not a funny story, but I have a story behind these jeans. So, um, I think it was maybe about a year and a half ago, or maybe last summer, I basically was in London staying at a friend's house and I needed a pair of jeans quite desperately so I was like I'm gonna have to go and buy some so I did a panic buy and I went to and other stories and I literally just saw these hanging there was like two or three pairs left saw them hanging and tried them on and was like yep yeah, they're brilliant amazing perfect bought them and they turned out to be like my favorite pair of jeans and Annoyingly, they didn't have a name on them and I never could find them on the website so I could never really link, or I could never find the exact pair. Um, but I think, I mean, I'll have a look at another story. I'm sure there'll be a pair that is very similar. Um, but they just work really well for my height, which is surprising because um, and other stories don't do different leg lengths. So their standard leg, I think, is something like a 34, maybe it's a 32, I'm not sure. But anyway, half the time their jeans are far too long. But this one sort of like miracle pair just happened to fit me really, really well. And they're that sort of perfect, I guess, ankle skimming length. Um, and they don't have a fret, that was it. I, I wanted a pair of jeans without a frayed hem. That was why I was panicking, because I, I couldn't find it was, it was at the time where jeans, that frayed hem was all the rage and it was really difficult to find jeans without a frayed hem for a little bit and I found these and I was like, oh, these are what I wanted, they're that sort of, I guess, almost like 90s straight leg, bit of a funny awkward length jean, um, but I love them, they're so good for pairing with brogues or um, ankle boots. My shoes are the, uh, I can't ever remember the name of these. Oh, Mono Dr. Martin, so they're the all black version with the black sole and the black stitching. And for my bag, I'm not 100% sure which bag I'm going to wear today, but I'm going to wear a brown bag because I quite like how brown looks with navy. So I have two bag options. 
My first bag option is the Little Lifner bag, which I um, spoke about a little bit in last week's video. Um, this is the medium sized tulip tote, which I brought with a discount code that they very kindly gave me. It is a stunning, stunning bag, and I think I've said this before that it reminds me of something like the Row or Jill Sander would, would do. Um, and it's just such an awesome um, tote bag. The other bag, it all depends on what I'm carrying today really, is this brown uh, bucket bag from a brand called Trademark. I love this bag but it can be a bit of an awkward one sometimes because of its shape. Um, it's not the kind of bag that you take with you when you need to carry a lot. Um, like, I can't fit it's almost like if you take too much it becomes a bit of a puzzle trying to fit everything in this bag but it's um, a beautiful bag it's so beautifully crafted and I love the handle because you can um, I'm just going to show you how you can slightly alter it I should have really set this up before I film the video <laughs> okay so what you can do is you can either have the strap like this, just free, and you can actually kind of get it underneath your arm. Or it has uh, this clasp here, so you can actually uh, like pinch it in. And, uh, oh, she says, yeah, there we go. Or you can pinch it in and have it like this, which is also quite nice, but you can only really cinch it in like this if you uh, haven't really filled the bag too much. And now on to my third day of jet lag. Um, so the theme of comfort continues. Um, I feel a bit better today, but still very um, spaced out and just energy levels are a bit off. So I'm just spending the day at home today, getting through some emails, trying to kind of get back into the routine of work. So I'm wearing the um, and daughter jumper again that you saw last week. I'm wearing a size small, just for reference, and I think going forward I'm going to put the sizes of everything in the description box because often I forget to say the size in the video. Um, it, a couple of questions I've had about the jumper, um, mainly to do with the texture of it because it's 100% wool, so it doesn't necessarily have a soft touch to it, it is a little bit rough, and I know that 100% wool doesn't always agree with everybody's skin. I do have quite sensitive skin, so I sometimes do struggle with wool and mohair. Um, but this isn't like, it's not really, really rough. It, I mean, it does have a slightly smooth handle to it. And I wonder if over time, as you wear it, it gets softer. Um, but it's definitely not as rough as some 100% wool jumpers that I've worn. But just a heads up, like if you find that 100% wool doesn't agree with your skin. Um, I mean, I'm not wearing anything underneath this. Um, you could put like a long sleeve top underneath it if it irritates your skin maybe, or just like, um, uh, you know, like a Uniqlo, one of their really thin like thermal tops or something. Um, but I found it, like it hasn't caused any itching with me so far. And I think that's just because it's not as rough as some wool jumpers are. Um, that being like, I love this jumper. Like I've worn it a ton. Oh, there's a hair on me. Um, I um, I explained last week why I love it so much. It's just such a good um, cream jumper. And uh, my glasses, um, I think I spoke about ages ago in a blog, are from Oliver Peoples. They don't do this exact colorway anymore, um, but they do this style still um, and annoyingly I don't know if it's showing up on camera I've got a blue filter in them because I really struggle on the computer and on my phone so they recommended putting a blue filter but it means that whenever I have my photo taken or anything like that they reflect um, this sort of like purple colour which isn't great um, but um, my eyes are just so tired at the moment that I need to wear them. Trousers are the uh, a Memento trousers again, the, the black uh, wool silk blend ones. Now, um, a few people said that they couldn't um, get to grips with the website. I couldn't either. It's all in um, Korean, I guess. 
even when you click English, it's still a very difficult website to navigate. So I um, have found some US retailers that stock the brand. I haven't found any UK retailers, but anyone who lives in the US or who doesn't mind paying the shipping, um, I have found a few websites where it's easy to shop and I will leave those below. And then my um, shoe of choice today is my Birkenstocks again with socks again. This time I've paired them with some oatmeal coloured socks again from Muji. Muji have got some great textured socks in at the moment. Um, I, these are really similar to the black pair that I wore last week that um, were sort of like a waffle. These are along the same line. They've almost got like a almost a sort of cable pattern on them. And that's me for today. It's not incredibly exciting. Um, if I do go out, I'll probably just put on the Norse Projects coat and a tote bag. Um, but yeah, I am still a little bit delicate. Hopefully tomorrow I will be a bit more g'd up and uh, have more energy. Today's outfit is quite a look. Um, it's got a very strong aesthetic to it. But if you've been following me for a while, you know, I do like to experiment with slightly strong shapes and looks. So that is what I'm doing today. I'm going to London, so i am decided to showcase a new dress. Now this dress is from a brand that I haven't tried before called Selected Femme. And I, so earlier on in the year, sort of around spring, summertime, I went to Copenhagen um, and attended the uh, sustainability summit that they have over there every year. And I went to a talk with Claire Press, who is the sustainability editor at Vogue Australia. I believe that's her title. Anyway, she was a really insightful woman, um, loads of interesting things to say. She also has a great podcast called Wardrobe Crisis. Anyway, her talk was in collaboration with Selected Femme. And as part of the talk, Selected Femme uh, previewed their Autumn Winter 19 collection. And the whole thing was just about how Selected Femme, going forward, were going to implement a lot more uh, sustainable practices within their collection. So it wasn't showcasing a sustainable collection, it was just showing how the whole collection, going forward, was going to be more sustainable. So it was really interesting and it was nice to see a brand not just making one small sustainable collection. Anyway, when I was um, looking through it all, I was very, very drawn to this dress and the lady at Selective Femme very kindly offered to gift it to me when it finally was released and it is now released. So it's um, a black dress. Now, it's a really, really nice dress. However, it's £110. Um, so it's more than your kind of like average cos dress, but it is made from 100% um, organic cotton. And so this is kind of like where the catch-22 is, I think, like £110 for a plain black dress does seem expensive, especially because there's no real, you know, bells and whistles on it, but it is made from a sustainable or a more sustainable fabric. So you can see where like there's like catch-22 and I'm seeing it more and more often that prices do increase when things are made uh, organic or you know more sustainably. Um, that being said though I'm still a bit like £110 for a plain organic cotton dress. Yeah not quite sure but that being said it is a lovely dress. Um, it has some very nice details. It's got a, a waist that you can cinch in as much as you want or you can wear it really loose. Um, has this nice wrap detail here and then you tie it up. I'm wearing a size 34, I th no sorry, I'm wearing a size 36 but I think I should have really gone for a 34 because it's a little bit baggy around the chest and it's got a very nice like subtle balloon sleeve and um, yeah I, I think it's just a, it's a very nice dress, it's a very easy to wear dress, it's kind of like an anytime dress, it's extremely comfortable. It's one of those dresses where I feel really comfortable but I feel really good in it. And I've paired it with my Calvin Klein boots. And this is what I mean by it being a look. Like, it has a kind of Halloween witchy vibe to it, which is, you know, apt for this time of year. Um, but it does feel quite strong. It feels very, um, I mean, because it's all black, it feels very ominous. It's, yeah, it's quite a bold look. So today, while I'm in London, I think to soften this look, I'm going to pair it with a trench. I'm going to pair it with my Cos trench that... 
I think I um, showed in my first Week in Outfits video maybe, it's from uh, summer, so it's unfortunately not available anymore, but it's always worth checking eBay and Depop. You see what I mean about the trench just kind of balancing that all black outfit out? Because I did try this with a darker coat and it was, it was too much, it wasn't right. So yeah, I think a trench just um, softens it a little bit. And then I'm going to wear my little lifter bag as a pop of colour. <laughs> this is my idea of a pop of colour. I like the um, tone of the trench with the uh, kind of like chestnut colour of the bag. And yeah, that's me for today. I, I've, um, I think I'll do the trench up. I did this with the Studio Nicholson one at the beginning of the week. I like wearing my trenches like this. Just the couple couple of buttons done up at the top and then leave the bottom open and then really cinch in the waist. Because as much as I do like to play around with like big boxy shapes, I um I do still like to kind of accent the waist because I don't always want to look like a square. <laughs> um so kind of really pulling in a big trench or a big layer is a good way to create a nice silhouette. Yeah, I think that is me for today. This is a good bag to take to London because I can get everything in it. Today has been one of those days where it has rained all day. It's been so grey and gloomy. Uh, Dean and I have literally done nothing. We've just sat around the house being really lazy all day and now we're quite bored and restless and we want to go out so we decided to go to the cinema because I feel like cinema is a really good thing to do on a rainy day um, so I just really wanted to be like quite comfortable and quite relaxed um, while in the cinema so uh, I'll de-layer, I should really de-layer first and then I can kind of show you the components of what I'm wearing that will probably be easier so um, I'm wearing the black Everlane cashmere jumper that you saw at the start of the week in a size small. Then over the top I'm wearing the Arquette oversized blazer. This is the same as the grey one that you've seen me wear. Such a good um, black blazer. Like I'm so glad Arquette bought it back because it was out of stock for ages and I just thought if that's a one time thing they're making such a mistake. But I think it's like a permanent thing that they're doing now. Um, and then I'm wearing, I'm going to put the Sophie Hulm bolt bag on because this is such a good everyday uh, black crossbody bag. My jeans are from weekday. Now these are the weekday Seattle jeans. On the label it says Seattle win. I don't know if that's something to do with the style or the colour. But when you go online, I find weekday really hard to shop online because the colours are so different to what you actually get. I feel like it's just not photographed very well because online these don't look like this at all. Um, when I first tried these on I was a bit unsure about them because they're a bit of a funny length on me. These are a leg 28 but I wouldn't say this is a 28 leg at all. This seems much more like a 30 or like a 31. Um, it's a bit of an awkward length and I kind of thought oh this is, I don't like these but I actually think they're really good for ankle boots. They're so good for, yeah, any like ankle boot that you want to tuck underneath your jeans. Perfect for that. And they're one of those styles that for someone of my height or lack thereof, they're really leg lengthening. I feel like they make my legs look a lot longer than they are. I am, um, they're exceptionally tight when you first try them on. They do give a little bit. Um, I tried on the next size up but they gaped a bit too, mu too much around the waist so I stuck with the size 24 um, and yeah I just had to go through like a week of uh, just wearing the extremely tight jeans but they do give but they don't give so much that they completely sag they're still quite nice and tight um, and they're very true blue indigo colour and I just think they look like just a really nice like classic kind of smart jean um, and then my shoes. So, my shoes are from Joseph. They are a pair of boots that I acquired, gosh, maybe two winters ago now? Or maybe it was last winter. I can't remember, I'm really bad at this. Um, and I actually got these in the sale. I'm not much of a sale shopper, but when it comes to like shoes and bags, I think sales are quite good for that. And 
These went down to some ridiculously cheap price and then they were like gold dust, couldn't find them anywhere. And I spent weeks like refreshing Matches, Netaporter, all of those websites and finally found them in my size. And I think I got them for like £140, which I think for a pair of Joseph boots is really, really good because these are such a good quality shoe. They remind me of like the Dr. Martin Chelsea boots. And what I really like about these is they're quite roomy so I can fit really thick socks underneath them. These are like my go-to boots if it's raining, snowing, or if it's really, really cold and I need to put like some thermal socks underneath. Um, and then, because basically all of um, my scarves are in the loft, and right now I can't bother to go up in the loft, I will go up in the loft um, maybe tomorrow. So for now I'm going to use a jumper as a scarf, which um, I think looks, it looks very preppy, doesn't it, to wear a jumper over your shoulders. I actually like this as a way to kind of introduce a little bit of colour to quite a basic outfit. I mean, most of the elements I'm wearing are black, um, which is quite unusual for me. I've been wearing a lot of black recently, actually. Um, so I just think by putting this on my shoulders, it kind of just adds something to it, doesn't it? This jumper's from Udon Choi. It's a really nice kind of... I wouldn't call it camel, it's a very like dark orangey brown. It's a really nice jumper, really beautiful. Um, but also you can do this with any jumper. And um, yeah, just I just like how it elevates. You know, I'm all about trying to elevate boring outfits, aren't I? And I feel like jumper over the shoulders does that very well. And then my hair's just slicked back because it's a little bit greasy. Could do with a wash. Um, and yeah, not much to say about this. I really, and um, this isn't the kind of outfit I wear a lot. Like, I think a lot of the time you see me in like big floaty dresses or big layers. But there is something quite nice about wearing just like a pair of quite slim trousers and a blazer. Like, I do like stuff like this. I think it is quite flattering for my body shape. But, um, you know me, I just, I, I just like to wear like quite big layers sometimes. Um, and so, um, when I wear stuff like this, I kind of feel a little bit boring um but anyway that's that i'm rambling now anyway that's me for today <laughs> today honestly i'm not loving my outfit i don't know what it is but it just doesn't feel right it's not wowing me it's not really bringing me much joy but i don't have time today to fuff around with trying other things and it's one of those days where like things aren't going right my hair's really greasy so i have to like tie it back in this awful low bun that just looks terrible on me. Um, so yeah, it's been like a bit of a funny start to the morning, which in turn means that just like everything just feels a bit ugh, and that's how I feel about my outfit as well. It's not terrible, it's just not, I'm not, I'm not wowed by it. I'm wearing my, uh, I'm wearing the Norse Projects coat again today, but I've uh, worn it completely sort of wrapped around and tied up. And then no prizes for those who can guess which jumper is underneath, because it is of course the and daughter jumper. And I'm wearing the uh, cream a memento trousers again. So a lot of pieces that you've seen already, just sort of reconfigured. Um, the uh, what was I going to say? The coat is a size 34. The jumper is a size small, and the trousers. I do not know what size they are, so because they're currently on, and I'll put that in the description box below. On my feet, I'm wearing a pair of boots that I bought, I think, gosh, maybe two years ago now, and they're from a brand called um, AD, I believe that's how it's pronounced. It's spelled A E Y D E, but there's an accent on the uh, E at the end, so I'm pretty sure it's AD or Ada, um, and. They, they're awesome boots, really, really cool boots. They're like a, I guess you couldn't really call them a Chelsea boot because they hit sort of a bit too high to be a Chelsea boot. They kind of come to the bottom of my shin and they've got a really nice, uh, slightly squared off chiseled toe and a very low heel. Um, really, really good boot for uh, this time of year. The heel is a nice touch as opposed to a flat boot, but you know, it's not a huge heel, so it's really easy to walk in. The only problem I've had with these boots is I've found that the heel has worn down loads. So I wore them, when I first bought them, I wore them, 
a ton, obviously as you do, um, you know, in winter I tend to live in boots pretty much, and the heel just wore down so quickly, and when I pulled them out of the box uh, this week to examine the heel, I feel like it's maybe worn down almost like past the point of return, you know like when a heel is really worn down and you start to almost see like the inside of the heel, that's when I'm like, oops, I think I should have had these rehealed earlier. So I think, um, today I'm, I'm going to wear them, but I think before I start wearing them a ton again, I need to take them to a cobbler just to see what they can do about it, because otherwise it's just going to wear down and I think it will completely ruin the heel. Um, but yeah, I was a bit gutted because it, they were really expensive, I think they were over £200, and I just wasn't expecting the heel to wear down so quickly and as much as it did. So if you are looking to maybe buy a pair of boots from AD, maybe just keep that in mind that they might have to be rehealed either like quite quickly or get like a, you know, like before you even wear them, maybe get like a, almost like a protective bit put on it to reduce the amount that they will reheal. And my bag is the styled bag again. I feel like because I'm not really loving this outfit, I was like, I'll chuck on this bag because it's quite interesting and it might just excite me a little bit, you know, spice up the outfit a bit. Um, and what else? Oh, I've got some new earrings on which I will show you. All right, just come a little bit closer so you can see the earrings. They are from a brand that I have only just been introduced to because they got in touch and actually asked me to pick out a pair of earrings called Reliquia. They are Australian, I believe. And they are like almost a sort of chunky organic shape hoop. I don't know if you can see that very well. This camera doesn't have autofocus, so I can't like bring it really close. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can see. You can see that. It's just a very chunky, gold, almost like slightly wobbly shaped hoop. They're really nice. They've got a really nice weight to them. They feel like a, a good quality earring. Um, the only thing is, I don't know if anyone else gets this or is a bit funny about this, but like shades of gold, I just feel like sometimes if the kind of colour of the gold isn't quite right, it just, something's just a little bit off, like, I don't know what it is, it's hard to explain. If you, if you get this like me, then you'll understand, but sometimes some gold is just not the right sort of colour of gold and it just doesn't look quite right and I feel like that about these earrings, there's something about it that just looks a little bit too, I don't know what it is, maybe it's too like light coloured, like the gold's too light, I'm not sure, um, but they are a very nice pair of earrings which I do think are great for, um, you know when you're just wearing something really simple and you just want to add something that's going to make it a little bit more interesting, a good chunky earring, like a good statement earring is um, excellent for that. And that is me for today. Yeah, not, not an exciting one. You can see why I'm not quite loving it. It's just a bit of a funny one. But we all have days like this, don't we, where we just don't quite feel right in what we've put together. Um, and I think it's just important to document that because I, I mean, I'd say 90% of the time I'm quite happy in what I wear, but I do have days where I'm just like, do you know what, this isn't working and I don't feel confident or good in what I'm wearing.